Hello everyone. Well, I thought, uh, ooh, sorry, I can't hear very well. Um, I've just had a big blow and uh, it's, my ears have popped. I don't normally blow my nose, but if I hadn't done that before speaking to you, I'd have had snot dribbling down onto my top. Hello. We've got, uh, oh look, we've got Lottie and Willow again to stop. Mm -hmm. This is Willow, of course. We've got Daisy just down there out of shot and Molly. Well, there's Molly, look. Um, where are you, Lottie? Now, Lottie is always on the couch for food. Willow's not so bad. Lottie! Oh, she's, oh, it's okay. She's sitting in the sun, aren't you? Are you sitting in the sunshine? We've got some sun. Um, I'm such a moody cow because at the moment I'm feeling pretty good because I've just come home from hell um, or work and the sun is actually shining. We've uh, The last week or so um, we've had some very inclement weather for February. We're now into March. I, I was sitting outside with my top off, you know, every, every chance I could for 20 minutes, no sun cream. The sun isn't very strong, is it, at this time of year anyway, but it's just to try and top up my vitamin D, which your body produces when you're in the sun, but not if you put all that cancer-causing sun cream on. It is good to get some sun on your bare skin. But obviously, don't overdo it, but it's, um, it's a good way of topping up your vitamin D, isn't it? Willow. I love these dogs. Mm. I'd keep them if I could. Oh, anyway, yes, regarding Lottie, she's, um, she's on the couch for any, anything that resembles food. Yesterday I caught her licking a dishcloth that was on the floor next to the washing machine because it had some food on it. And she has been known to go upstairs and find cotton buds in the bin and eat the ends with wax on. Now I use a cotton bud after a shower normally, just around the ears. Just around the ears, not in the ears, just around the ears and a little bit. You don't poke it too far in, just, you know, it's just something I like to do. Mark does it as well, but when he pulls out a cotton bud, there's enough wax on there to make a candle. And there's hardly anything in my ears. So Lottie eats the wax. <laughs> Dirty dog. Are you licking your imaginary friend again, Daisy? Mm. Yes. People find you very amusing, don't they? Mm. Mm. So it's Monday time of making this video, which is the worst day of the week for me. Um, I don't like Mondays. That song, the Boon, Boomtown Rats from the 80s. I, well, I certainly don't like Mondays. Horrible, horrible day. But I've got the worst day over with. I had a little mini meltdown at work. I haven't had one of those for a while, but I've, I forgot to take my pills. You see, I haven't taken them for a while. So I'd better take one today and one in the morning. That possibly as what, what caused it. But yeah, I really did have a little bit of a a hissy fit. Um, but I calmed down, I spoke to the Lord as I often do. Whether you believe in the Lord or not, it's up to you, but I believe in a higher power. Or whoever there is, I chat to somebody in my head and I think somebody's listening. So I just asked them, I'll just protect me Put your protective bubble around me, keep me calm, and, and then I calm down. I, you know, whether I calm myself down by saying that, I don't know, but anyway, that it worked. And then towards the end of the, the shift, I was having a bit of banter with a, a colleague who I've, I have a feeling, I think he's a gay, you know. He's a little bit flamboyant. This is a picture of him at work. So, no, this isn't, well, this is, is <laughs> this is a picture of him, but not at the work, not at my work. He has another job in a, in a small shop. So I said, come to work wearing that wig, because we have a charity called Tickled Pink over here, which is a breast cancer charity, and the shop I work for supports it. So you're allowed to come in and wear something pink. Now, I do have a pink polo shirt, but I'm not wearing my own clothes to work. I do at Christmas wear Christmas jumpers, but I'm not, I don't want to mix work and home. Because as soon as I get home, my work uniform comes off straight away. Ooh, I feel dirty wearing that in the house. And then I put my own clothes on and I feel more like me then and not just a drone. I'm a drone, aren't I? Mm. So, um, because this wig is pink, um, 
I said, oh, come to work in that. I don't think he will. Anyway, we had a bit of banter and I had a, a much needed laugh and I made him laugh a lot and which made me happy because I do like to make folk laugh. It's very uplifting for m myself too, just having a bit of a giggle. Bit of banter, bit of a giggle. I do take the pee out of him quite a lot, but it's all in, um, it's all in good fun anyway. It's not meant uh, nastily, is it? I don't do it nastily. So what have I come to tell you? Oh yeah, I thought I'd just have a chat, you know, because I'm all alone apart from these four-legged friends. You're never alone with a dog. Mm. Eh? I love my dogs. So, I've got a little bit of a shopping thing. I'm not gonna, it's not a big one, um, who are misses, but it's a li little uh, rucksack full of a few bits. You might be interested. I know a lot of you like my shopping hauls. I don't know why. Um, I think it's mainly for my overseas viewers, like from America. They like to see what we buy. So I've got my uh, rucksack. I, I did a very quick shop. So might as well show you that if you want to see it. Uh, excuse all the mess, won't you? Um, the dogs have had, I don't know what they've been chewing up, but there's uh, some threads, th threads and fibers. In fact, I'll just show you something I found. I have absolutely no idea what this is that I found on the rug when I came home. I think it could be a teddy bear's testicle. I'm not sure, but it's furry. It's the right shape. Hang on. Oh no, it doesn't squeak. So it's not the squeaker. That's what the dogs tend to do, you know. If we give them a squeaky toy, the first thing they do is get to that squeaker to remove it. And I think then the dogs feel that they've killed it. But that does look very bizarre. I've no idea what that is. Oh, and I've just squeezed it. Oh, it might be something. I'm assuming it's from a soft toy of some description. Oh, I hope it is. Oh, I could have squeezed that and all blood and pus could have come out of it. Ugh. So I didn't have all my panniers with me today, so I didn't do much of a shop. Well, I had some, I've, I've been a bit poorly of late. I've had some stomach trouble. Um, I don't know if I've picked up a bug, but I was very poorly at work on Saturday and I nearly came, oh, I nearly didn't go to work. And I nearly, twice I nearly asked to go home, but I thought, oh no, I'll, 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 I'll try and cope. So I eventually work, worked the whole shift. But the thing that uh, relieved the pain was sucking on some peppermints. I did buy some Gaviscon, um, but that didn't do anything. So I've decided to start drinking some peppermint tea. And I had one of Mark's tea bags uh, last night and it was okay, but um, I hadn't heard of the brand. This is a brand in the UK. I'll just adjust myself, there we are. This is called, oh, see my stomach's hurting a bit now, bending over. I'm not, I'm not right yet. This is a brand of tea called Tea Pigs and they're quite expensive. I think these are normally about 3 99 for uh, 15. 15 biodegradable tea temples, but they're on offer. So I thought I'd try them. Um, try and cut down on the coffee. I don't drink much coffee anyway, one or two a day sometimes only one on a bad day maybe three but I don't, I'm not an excessive coffee drinker but um, I thought it'd be good to try other things so I've got this mint tea pigs minty fresh tea bags but I also decided to try some other ones so I've got these these look how similar they are look at those now I can't think that tea pigs make these as the extra special tea bags, but you never know. These are considerably cheaper though. These are one ninety nine. Um, the the boxes are almost identical, aren't they? Anyway, and there's fifteen in there, so I thought I'd try peppermint and licorice tea as well. So that's something different. This is just something, now I never normally use tissues and I probably won't use these, but this is just for my Dashund collection. And I'll show you, I'll do a video of all the bits. I've just ordered some more bits. Some of it um, is for my mum, so I won't be showing you those things. 
until after Mother's Day because I've got some bits for Mother's Day you see so I won't show those until after I think our Mother's Day is uh, a different date to yours in the USA now the sun's gone in now I haven't got any extra lights on but anyway you can still see what see what I'm doing can't you it's gone a bit dark so this is the, the design that um, they've got on bedding and towels and cushions and all sorts so that was a pound for a box of tissues um, also because I feel like I need a good soak I got some more Epsom salts yes Molly you can't eat them I normally put the whole bag into the bath um, it's a kilogram I think in here one kilogram I can't convert that to Imperial you don't have to put you can put a whole thing in you can put to help relax tired and aching muscles use two to four cups or 500 to one kilogram anyway I'll probably bung the whole thing in it's only two two pounds 49 for all of the whole thing and I'll have a, a relax they do tend to zonk me out Epsom salt bath if you can't sleep it's a good tip you have yourself an Epsom salt bath as hot as you can stand it um, and just relax in it preferably for about half an hour if you can breathe in the steam and you'll be like a zombie when you come out of that bath uh, when I have an Epsom salt bath I have to make sure I've done everything that I need to do if I'm at work the next day I, may, I need to make sure I've done everything because I just need to go straight to bed you feel absolutely zonked um, it says it's reviving reviving but it isn't it's the magnesium in it I think because it, it does absorb into your skin it's very good for you but probably not all the time so I've got that Now, this is something that I'm, go I've, I've start I'm going to reintroduce. This is just a pack of how many? Eight. This is a pack of eight little notepads that I can put in my pocket. Now, I used to always carry a notepad at work and jot down my to-do list. I used to jot down my shopping lists and my to-do lists as I was at work, as I thought of them. And I've stopped doing that because I, used, I, I now have my iPod Touch in my pocket. So I do still use that to write down stuff I need to buy. So if I'm in the shop and I'm shopping for other people and I see something on offer or I see something, oh, I need to get one of those, I, I jot it down on the notes section in my iPad. And then I obviously use that as I'm going around the shop after I finish to buy the stuff. Um, but I used to use these notebooks and write my to-do list and then when I come home I used to refer to them and I don't do that with the iPod because once the iPod's home I don't really look at it so I thought I'm going to reintroduce the old-fashioned way of writing writing things down they're more likely to get done because I used to do to-do lists all the time and it was very 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 satisfying having a little list no matter how small or small the jobs or you know quick the jobs just writing them down and ticking them as you do them was you know very therapeutic um, so I'd use daily lists and I might, I might do things I have to do today and I might do a longer list things I want to do this week and, and maybe one for this month but this is normally I use for daily so I thought they're £1.50 for all those little notepads ideal just to slip in my pocket so go back to the old way of pen and paper instead of these electronic devices I haven't got much else in here, just some uh, naughty things. Oh, well, this is for my, um, I don't know if that's going to help. This is for my stomach. I think I'll try this milk of magnesia liquid because um, it's for upset stomachs. I think I've got, I've caught something. There's something going around at work. That's the uh, perils of working with the great unwashed. But uh, I think um, I'm going to take a little, whatever the dose is of that and see if that helps settle me. I'm a lot better than I was. Saturday I had to go straight to bed when I came home from work um, I mean I knew I'd be in bed a long time I even took my contact lenses out and took my pants off pants as in trousers I didn't take my underpants off and Sunday I spent yesterday I spent most of the day in bed despite the fact I wanted to get on with with things I just was zonked so I think I've had a bug or something these are new they're free from chocolate buttons I shouldn't but who cares giant chocolate buttons those are free from so they're suitable for vegans i'm assuming <laughs> says vegetarian on they don't actually have the vegan label but i'm pretty sure they are 
because they've got sugar, cocoa butter, cocoa mass, rice syrup, inulin, whatever that is, coconut oil, rice flour, flavorings, emulsifier, soy lecithins. So they should be okay for vegans. And then they've started doing my local Asda. I've started doing the white chocolate. Oh, I think I've got three white chocolate buttons. And they should be vegan again because it's in the free from section. They just say vegetarian, but yes, they are vegan. There's, there's no milk, milk in those. I've got, I did have three of them, I thought I did. Oh, yes, I did. Did get three. And then these must be discontinued, I think. I've had these before, these mini moos sort of bunny comb bar. They're sort of like a honeycomb bar, but without the honey. They were reduced from 80 pence each to 40 pence each, so I have a feeling that they could be deleted, as they say. And what's this? Oh, <laughs> they're for the dogs, because we've got, they've already had their T word. I can't say it again, because they'll be wanting another T word. But um, just got some little amazing mixed treats for the dogs. Is that it? Yeah, that's it. So there we go. That's a little mini shopping haul for you. Apologies if you can hear any noise going on outside. I think somebody's using a chainsaw or something. Aren't they, Daisy May? Um, what's I going to say? Oh, yes. So by the time you see this, you should have seen my juicing video where I was full of the joys of spring. Um, and feeling more, yeah, I have, I, I, I fluctuate up and down, up and down with my mood. So I'm obviously had a little blip at work, but I'm never, never, ever happy when I'm in that building. And as soon as I come home, my lift, my lift moods, my mood lifts. And especially when you're greeted by four waggy tails and tongues. Mm. Oh, Molly Pop. Oh, she's just off. You're just off camera, aren't you, darling? Uh, oh, that is. Oh, she's lovely, she's a little willow. You're a lovely little willow when you don't bark. Ah, uh, Lottie is still in the sunshine. So, what? So yes, the next video should be the first in the Isle of Wight holiday. Now I have done the first one and it is on YouTube, ready to go, but it's private at the moment. But I know what I'm like. If I put that one up, it could be weeks and weeks before you see the cottage tour because the first video is just me getting there. And the second one is the tour of the cottage. So unless I have all the videos more or less done and ready to go, then it's gonna be, you know, you'll be waiting ages. It'll probably be Christmas before you see the last video. So I'm making this interim video as a ch chatty video to uh, give me some more time to actually do the editing of all the other videos. There probably will be about five-ish, five or six, I think, various videos showing different places on the Isle of Wight. Did I tell you about my next holiday? I'm not sure if I did. We are going to Wales this year in September. First time I've ever been to Wales. I've always been put off by Wales because I've always had the impression since I was quite young that the Welsh hate the English. And I got this impression from sometime in the 80s, um, English people who had bought holiday cottages in Wales, they had their holiday cottages burnt down by Welsh activists, I think it was. I'll have to look it up. Do you remember that? Anyone watching who remembers that? Um, and I thought, oh, they don't like us. So I don't know much about Wales. Uh, the only sort of thing I know about Wales, well, there's a few things. And again, this will go completely over the heads of some of you watching, especially if you're not watching for the UK and if you're not a certain age. But things I remember from Wales are Ivor the Engine, which was a kids programme about a steam engine, funnily enough. Jones the Steam, Die Station. Oh, and there was somebody. They all had their surnames were named after what they did. So somebody called Song. He was the choir master. And it was a very sort of, um, I'll show you some pictures if I can. It's a very sort of primitive animation that we uh, watched when we were kids. I bought the engine and, he, and the engine actually kept Welsh dragons in the firebox in the tender. It used to hatch and come out. And 
Yeah, it was a little bit bizarre, but we used to watch that. So, and then Gavin and Stacey is a, a great sitcom, which I can watch over and over again, um, set in a place called Barry, which is in more down South Wales. We're going to be staying up at North Wales in a place called Anglesey, which is an island. And I, I know, show my ignorance. I didn't realise that Wales had islands. I thought Wales was just a little bit on the on the side of England. I didn't realise that there was islands. And now Anglesey, I know I should I should have paid attention in geography. Can't remember doing Wales so. Anyway, Anglesey is an island off the mainland of Wales, but I think it's connected with a bridge. You don't have to get a ferry. So we've got a lovely, well, it's more a house really, um, three bedroomed house. We'll, act, we'll have a double bed each. There'll be room for, you know, they'll, they'll take dogs. Um, and it's within a, 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 a few minutes walk from the beach. So that's in September. So hopefully you'll be coming along with me to see that. But in future, possibly, fingers crossed, the next holidays you see will be completely different because we are talking again about buying a caravan and we talked about this last year I think sometime last year and it didn't come to anything it just fizzled out but my partner has sort of started thinking again mainly because I think he was chatting to my next door neighbour who has a big caravan who did have it parked in our in well in his driveway we share the drive um, he had it parked there for a bit. It's not there all the time, so he's, he got chatting. I've always liked the idea of caravanning. I've never done it. Well, I've done it when I was a kid. My mum and dad had a caravan in the 70s, I, and I was very, very young, so I can't remember very much about it. But I know caravans back in the 70s weren't like the caravans now. I think they did have a toilet inside, some of them, or possibly you would have a chemical toilet that you'd keep in the caravan and um, you take it outside and do your business. I don't think it even flushed. Basically, it was like a two-part thing. So you did your business into this, the, the lower part, which contained a chemical, I think, that broke up the solid matter. Hope you're not eating, folks. But now, of course, caravans have flushing toilets, showers, microwave ovens, central heating, USB charging points, fridges, all sorts. Dual, fu dual fuel hobs, you know, cookers. So we did actually go, we had a lovely um, day a couple of Saturdays ago. We went to a place called Huddersfield, which is uh, not that far from where we are, to visit this caravan and motorhome dealer. And we had a good look around. We're only looking for a two berth caravan. We don't want anything big, just a two berth single axle. And we're looking around some and we just we just don't know what we're going to do with it if we're going to go for one it's not going to be because we've now got we've got the holiday booked in wales there's no point really in get a caravan too soon because once we have a caravan to get value from it we're going to make sure we use it for every holiday we take in the uk we could go to europe in it um on the channel tunnel um so we thought we will see what the, what's going to happen towards the end of the year because at the moment it's the start of caravanning season they've just had a big show i think it was in birmingham so this is where the caravans are sort of all the new ones come out and they're full price so we're thinking if we sort of buy at the end of the season we might get something cheaper if we go brand new or second hand we don't know yet the trouble is i'd like a brand new caravan but the type we're looking at, we've had to look at a few and we've, we've sort of settled on a brand we like and the model, but we have not actually been in it. We're going to go somewhere to actually go in it. We've seen it on YouTube and we've seen pictures and it looks just perfect for us because it has an L-shaped lounge at the front. It's a coachman caravan, if you know about caravans. It has an L-shaped lounge at the front, which I prefer to the two. Normally a caravan has two sort of seats facing each other so when you're watching the telly it's not so good because you're just facing each other and the TV is going to be to one side so you're never going to be sitting you know in this sort of position easily watching telly so the the caravan we want or like is a two berth so it has an L-shaped sofa and there's a TV point in the corner so it's more natural for viewing TV but it's also got a little dinette so well a sizable table two sizable upholstered chairs 
So you can sit there and have your, your meals. And then of course it's got the kitchen. And at the back of the caravan, it's got the washroom with a shower, sink, and loo. And there's uh, obviously wardrobe for clothes and other lockers for storing stuff. Um, and it's a coachman, so they're quite an expensive brand apparently. Um, but they, they have a reputation of being well made. So I'll just look for a second-hand coachman. Well, if we really want this particular layout, we have to get it quite new because it only came out this year. Um, it's a coachman pastiche for something, I can't remember. Anyway, I've been looking into it. I've been watching all the caravanning things I can watch on YouTube. I've bought caravanning magazines. I even yesterday watched a carry-on film. Again, you might not be aware of carry-on films if you live outside the UK. But there's a carry-on film called Carry On Behind, and it's set in a caravan site. So they had a very popular carry-on film called Carry On Camping, which was mainly under tents, and a very famous scene with uh, carry-on star Barbara Windsor doing exercises. They're very crude, uh, double entendre, very British comedies, Carry On. I don't know if you see them in the USA. You might on PBS or something. But they really, I've really, I've always liked Carry On films. They're if you, they're not as base comedy as Mrs Brown's Boys because there's no real swearing on Carry On films. It was more like cheeky, naughty, you know, titter titter sort of um, harmless. But you know, when you look at them now, they are a bit dated and very sexist. But I still laugh at them. You know, there's a lot of big-breasted ladies and. A lot of dirty old men leering at them <laughs> that's what people did back then you know they still do it now but they're not allowed to say you know men can leer at ladies breasts but they're not supposed to comment on them you know but men are men and men will look at ladies breasts if they're on they uh, on view you know not not that i will but you know i i do look at uh, well i probably look at other men the way that a straight man would look at ladies yeah I'm a gay did you not know yeah I'm one of those gays so um yeah anyway they had carry on behind and I was focusing more on the caravans I'd seen it so many times anyway but um I was uh looking at the caravans more and being more interested in what was in the caravans and wanting to see the caravans so um yeah, so if you like car caravans, Carry On Behind is the film to watch if you like to see 70s caravans. <laughs> but anyway, so I've done that. I might, um, we'll see, it might just fizzle out, but I'm really keen. It's just, we've got to work out the costs. Obviously, we'll be doing everything by halves, um, splitting the costs. But apart from the cost of buying the caravan, you've got to think of insurance. You've got to think of all the extras you need to buy. Um, to to go in the caravan and some external bits you really should have um and of course storage because we can't really keep it on the drive so it's going to cost us about 400 pounds a year just to store the caravan so that's why when we get a caravan we want to get out in it as much as possible so we get the value from it because if you buy a caravan and you go out in it once or twice a year and it's costing you 400 pounds to store and insure it's not worth having so that's why we want a smallish caravan, just right for two people. And of course, we can take the dogs. That's the joy of caravanning. We can take the dogs wherever. And I'm hoping not only will we be able to go away for weeks on end, or a week or two weeks maybe, but we'll be able to go for long weekends at, to places. We'll just be able to hitch up. You know, we can look at the weather on a Wednesday and think, oh, it's going to be a great weekend. Let's take the caravan to so-and-so. Ring up, book, book um, a, a pitch or whatever they call them in the in a, a caravan site and just go out i just i'm just smiling thinking about it and i've not even done it i uh, i think um the, the the programs i've seen on people who love caravanning you can it's so infectious i watched a youtube video of a man whose family had never been caravanning before and they bought a second hand caravan and, and the first time they went out in it it was an absolute disaster you know um yeah, the, 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 the car that was, to his car that was towing the caravan broke down. I think the turbo went on it or something he said. Um, so I think they managed to get to the site and it was raining all the time and they were sat inside the caravan. 
Oh, sorry, one of the dogs has let off. They were sat inside the caravan with the rain you know, coming down outside. And when they, they had to get a tow back to their home, and apparently the tow truck broke down twice. But despite all this, the, the chap who's talking about this said, despite all this, we absolutely loved it. And you could see his, his passion. For, they used to go um, camping in tents, you know, so they're used to that sort of thing. Um, but it was really infectious. You think, yeah, he had a disaster, but it didn't put him off. He was out there a couple of weeks afterwards once the car had been fixed. So I think it'll be, I'm trying to learn as much as I can about caravanning. I've got a book coming from Amazon. Try and learn everything I can. Um, but obviously you learn on the job, so to speak. You, you, you get your experience from doing it. You can read all the books, you can watch all the YouTube videos. I think doing it. But I'm really hoping we're going to do it this year. Because um, I can see so many opportunities for videos. Um, not only on this channel, but think of the vacuum cleaners I can review if, you know, little rechargeable ones saying, oh, this is suitable for a caravan and blah, blah, and actually show it cleaning in a caravan. Who's that noisy Sarah here? Sorry about the light going in and out again. I've not put my lights up. So, um, yeah, the only uh, bugbear with a caravan is my partner has to change his car. So that's what he's looking at as well, because he bought a car with a twin exhaust that's in the middle and you cannot put a tow bar and he knew that when he bought it but we stopped about thinking about caravans so now he's going to have to get a suitable car change his car that's not even a year old so once I, once he does that I'll know that we're definitely going to go for it because he loves his cars and he won't change his car unless there's a good reason so if he does go for a new car um, that will tow a caravan then I'll know yes it's so anyway what we're going to do we're saving up for I don't want to be in debt buying a caravan so I'm going to be putting some money away each month so whether we get one or not so I'll still have some money saved for it so that's that's what we're going to do so um, yeah I'm really really looking forward to hopefully fingers crossed becoming a caravanner because I as I said I've always loved the idea of just taking a little bit of your home with you and exploring and because I'm always a little bit apprehensive about going to new places and especially if we go to a hotel and it's too I know I'm old-fashioned but if it's two men going booking into the same hotel room I feel a bit uneasy I'm sure the people that work there don't bat an eyelid but for me we were going to go to the Lake District a few weeks ago and in the end I couldn't get the bloody day off work and um, it was going to be in a hotel, a normal hotel, and I was a bit, oh, do we have to? So I actually looked for a gay B&B, &B, and there was one in the centre of Keswick. But in the end, I couldn't go, so Mark went on his own. But he said it was really good. The two blokes that ran it were very friendly, and it was all clean, and it was nice, and blah, blah. So I would have normally gone with him, had the so-and-sos at work let me have that day, but they didn't. <sighs> So I, I don't know, it's silly. I know I'm of a generation where I just think it's uh, it's a sin. <laughs> it's not a sin, but I just feel uneasy in places. Um, I shouldn't, I know, but you know, there are still people um, that would poo-poo it or pour scorn on two men sharing a room. I mean, we don't share a room at home, so why should we share a room <laughs> on holiday? That's the only trouble with the caravan, we'd have to share the uh, double bed because the, the L-shaped sofa pulls out to make the double bed, you see. The dinette does form a little single bed, but I don't think even I'd be able to fit on there. You might get a kid on there, but... Um, and we don't really want to go for one of these big four berth ones with a bed at the end as well because it's too big. I think the bigger the caravan, the less you take it out somehow. I don't know. Something smaller that's easier to hitch up and, and you know, go on impromptu trips. So that's hopefully coming up. If you're interested in that, I think it'll be fun because I can, as I said, there's loads and loads of videos I can make on, you know, when we first get the caravan and the things I buy for the caravan and obviously our first trip out and all sorts. But yeah, I'm, I'm really hoping that that um, happens, but I'm going to, you know, plan for it to happen. It all depends, of course, on my partner changing his car. So we'll see what goes on with that um well right, that's it i think it was just a quick sort of chatty video 
because again some of you like me chatting I can't think why but even just a handful of you enjoy these sort of videos then that's worth sitting down and making them it's not much effort just to pop my camera there I've been doing um, more tidying up this is going to go for ages because I've just thought of other things to tell you I've been watching more of that um, tidying up show on Netflix with Marie Kondo but there's also another one on Netflix called Consumed um, but that I found out was from 2011 and they only made one season and I thought so they sound Canadian because I was watching a few and they were doing they were sp saying certain words and I can't remember what so, but they, they said, said uh, instead of saying out I think they say oot and I thought mm, they sound Canadian so I looked it up of course on Wikipedia and it is an American no sorry a Canadian show so it's quite a good concept they take these these people who've got too much stuff um, they try and they try and toss some of it um, while they're you know while it's in the home and then everything else gets packed up and taken to a storage area and they're left with just a suitcase full of stuff each the house is more or less stripped of everything apart from the bare essentials and they're allowed 10 items as a family of things that you know non-essential treats but they're not allowed a TV so they live a few weeks like this and then there's this carpenter chap comes along and helps make up furniture and they dress the house and they do a bit of decorating and then they come back and the house is all lovely and then a few weeks later they've got to go back to the warehouse and face all the stuff and out of all the stuff they're supposed to just take 25% so they've got to dump 75% and they have a big square in the middle of this uh, warehouse with with yellow tape and everything they're keeping goes in has to fit within this square so the ones I've seen most people do it there was this one lady who collected Tupperware I mean I can't talk of things I collect but anyway Tupperware seems a bit odd she had Tupperware everywhere some of it still just in the original box it was shipped in didn't even open them and she was very very at attached to her Tupperware oh, oh hang on I'm flashing near oh, I've been going for too long got four minutes she was a, I think she had a, I think she had a little bit of mental health problem to be honest but her husband collected Lego as well so they were quite bad couple but the, instead of getting rid of the Tupperware she shipped it off to her mother's garage and I thought oh heck it's like me shipping off my vacuums to my mother's loft although I, I'm still going to get rid of you know I'm not I'm not holding on to them she had a sort of emotional attachment to Tupperware which is a bit strange anyway you saw them a few weeks later and the Tupperware was coming back and I think by now that was in 2011 that series I think it's likely that their house is as bad or worse than it was before the lady whoever she is <laughs> came to do the thing but yeah that's it gets that got me inspired saying my house is nowhere near as bad as those on that show you know but this I want it just so and it's um it's not getting there yet and I've, I've got the watching this show was sort of motivate motivating me again but because I've been ill I haven't been able to do anything about it I'm still not right as I said I'm still a bit zonked and tired and what have you what are you looking at you oh I love these dogs mm. you you little willow you were a bit uneasy weren't you when you first started coming here but now when they come here they know where they are they know they're going to get looked after hmm don't you and Daisy's all right with them now she will actually sit next to them but they don't have much interaction oh I love doggies hmm hmm well, who could not love these look at her she's absolutely gorgeous right that's it just I've gone on for far too long chatting away hopefully you've enjoyed the chat I will um, see you uh, hopefully then fingers crossed the next video will be the first in my holiday series and I'll probably just put the rest of those up every few days until you've seen them all not every day but you know I might put one every other day I'll, I'll spread it over a couple of weeks or so and then there'll be something oh what was that noise there'll be something else hopefully for you to watch so thanks for watching thanks for subscribing thanks you for thumbing up or thumbing down whatever you want to do thanks for commenting and I'll see you on the next video bye for now
Oh, Roger! Yeah, I did a burp. Uh, oh, pardon. <laughs>